Recently, all of my friends have been using Discord Nitro features to try and show me how much better they are than me. So, here's the story of how I made my own Discord, where you don't need Nitro, because all those features come by default. Now, Discord consists of a few major features. Server selection, channels, signing up, logging in, and of course the real-time chatting. So before I can do any of that, we need to create a foundation for this project. Now, I don't know what got into me, but for this project I decided to use JavaScript. And then HTML and CSS for the website part. If you're unfamiliar, JavaScript is meant to be like the Satan of programming. <sighs> so here goes nothing. I decided to start making the client part first because I didn't want to face the server aspect just yet. Now this wasn't too complicated only because the majority of the client side is just HTML and CSS which has plenty of resources online to help you out. And also I've used it a couple times before so it wasn't anything new. To handle all of this I basically have three files. App.css which has all of the visual aspects inside of it. Why did I add this tiger in here? Bro, <laughs> what? like the UI, the styles, the theme, etc. App.jsx, which will handle the actual client side. That's the JavaScript stuff and I don't really understand it, so um, yeah, that's that. And finally, index.js, which is also JavaScript, but it basically just calls app.jsx and allows us to render stuff on the screen. So after some time, I got this login screen. Um, wait a minute, this looks a little bit plain. The... Yeah, there we go, that looks better. I guess. <laughs> now, this looks good, but it doesn't actually work. Like, you can basically enter stuff, but it doesn't actually... Like, nothing happens. You enter it, you can refresh the page, and nothing happens. Have you guys noticed Thick Among Us? That's peak comedy, all I'm saying. So, it's about time we set up the server part, so we can store the data that people input. Now, I could do all of the backend programming myself. Okay, who am I kidding? I can't be bothered to do that. So instead, we're going to use the StreamChat IO library that will help us out with storing the data. So what we have to do now is basically get all of that user inputted data, send it over to StreamChat so that we can store it. Now we can link this function to a button that we already have on the sign up page. So let's do that and test it out. Now if I enter some details and we go over to StreamChat, hopefully we should have a user, which yeah, it looks like we do. So awesome. Also, one more thing we need to do is make sure that the password is encrypted so that people can't just hack into our account. Not that anyone would want your bootleg Discord account, but it's a good practice. So with this, I made it so users can log in if their credentials match, and once you're logged in, you'll be taken to this empty page. The next feature that we will steal from Discord is servers. But before we do that, this video is sponsored by Evil Licorice, whose game Retro Gadgets is now available on Steam on Early Access. Now Retro Gadgets is a chill, organic experience that allows players to discover every step of the gadget creation process. Something really cool is that you can bring the gadgets you create in the game to your desktop as widgets. Currently this only works if you have the game running, but with future updates they are planning of fully downloading and exporting the widgets to run on your desktop independently. Retro Gadgets also has the workshop feature so you can browse and import gadgets from the Steam community and edit it and modify it in whatever way you like. It also has Lua coding support to program your own games, patterns, etc. Now I was lucky to have access to this game early, and if you enjoy chill games where you also get to have fun and maybe even learn a little bit, then this is a game for you. There's a lot of stuff to do and I've barely dived into it, plus it's an indie game so it has my full support. So if you want to check it out, I'll leave some links down below in the description and also in the pinned comment. So where were we? Oh, servers. We want users to be able to basically create group chats where multiple people can communicate at once. For this I created a button here and here because we want one for servers and one for private messages just like Discord. I linked a function to them that would essentially open up a brand new page. I also wanted to add a similar thing that Discord has where it displays your profile and name, so I did that by just basically retrieving data that you used to create your account in the first place, and then just made it look somewhat nice. But now we have to program the actual creation of servers. Now this is fairly simple, as StreamChat handles the actual database aspect of hosting them and saving their properties. 
Okay, for some reason I didn't really explain how this works, so let me quickly go through it. Basically, I could make all of the backend programming myself on how to transfer messages with like packets for instance, but I've already done that, I've already made a real-time chatting application before for university. So instead I decided to use this stream chat thing because it basically just does that stuff for us. That being said, I still needed to make the foundation for it and implement it, which wasn't too difficult, it was just a little bit of work, and then finally I get to choose what I want my chat to look like. And this essentially creates us an input bar at the bottom and allows us to enter messages and display them on the screen. It also allows us to upload images, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, with that working, we now need a way to invite people to our servers. Now, there's different ways to go about this, and in my case I'm going to make it as simple as possible. You basically can press this plus button that will allow you to enter somebody's name. Then over at Stream Chat, we'll go through every registered users and check if their name matches. And if it does, we'll just grab that user ID and add them to the server that you currently have selected. Okay, I lied. Do you actually have to enter the server name? I was gonna do it so that it's the server you're currently in, but that was kind of too difficult to do. This is just easier. Halfway through, I had some sort of an identity crisis, and um, for some reason I decided to add these buttons at the top, like a navbar style thing, so you can go to my Discord and my socials, which, looking back at it, is stupid, because who the hell is going to be using this? I'm not releasing this application, so I don't know what the point of this was, but um, yeah, it's there, so... Uh, at this point, I was basically finished with the entire application. I basically just spent some time cleaning up the code, because it was a mess. <laughs> Um, and yeah, the application works, but here's the thing, like, no one else is gonna be using this because I'm not gonna be hosting this bootleg Discord on my PC 24-7, you know, spending money on electricity and stuff when it's really not worth it. At least now I can send massive files without needing to pay for Nitro. Thanks for watching guys, make sure to check out Retro Gadgets, links to them will be in the description below.